There is a reason why it rose to glory in such a way. From physics simulation to modability, the game does it all. Want a Gran Turismo-esque career? We have it. F122 is not good enough for you? Well, enjoy racing the fastest machines in the world around the track of your choice with unprecedented driving dynamics. Hell, do you want to drive a T-Rex? Of course you do. And this game absolutely lets you do that. What I'm saying here is, your racing dreams are made reality with this game. Dodging and dashing around traffic on Japanese highways never was this much fun. This isn't a flawless game, nowhere near that. However, it does everything it essentially needs to do at the level most other sims can only dream of. I won't be getting into the meticulous details of how the sim works with the exact info on how many kilohertz a Ferrari F40 suspension works at and whatnot, as that isn't really what the end user even remotely cares about, and I don't want to put people to sleep. Well, if you buy all of the DLCs, it is fairly large. It has everything you'd want from a sim, reasonably priced cars, classics, sports cars, supercars and the like, as well as GT1s, GT2s, GT3s, F1s and more. In total, there are 178 cars, with 88 of them being in the base game, sporting 17 highly detailed laser scan tracks in their many layouts. The base game itself has the content to satisfy most for a decent number of hours. However, it must be said that this is not a huge number compared to the likes of Gran Turismo and Forza, but it is a bigger count than its direct competitors, those being iRacing and R-Factor 2. I've mentioned these a lot, so they must be good, right? Oh, absolutely. With a force feedback wheel, the fun to be had just hot lapping is limitless. You can precisely determine when the grip level is about to fall off. And thanks to the phenomenal sound design, you will also relish in the melodies of those meaty exploding dinosaurs. It is something so special you must experience at least once. All drivetrains have unique twists to them you see in all racing games. However, due to the inherent nature of a sim, it is especially obvious here. This is where the technical info would go, however, reading out a compilation of the preciseness of the tire model is inexplicably boring. Thus, just take my word for the fact that this is one of the most precise simulations out there. Yeah, just like every other racing game, it is more reminiscent of a demo derby than anything else. Unfortunately, the multiplayer is very simple. You just go to the server browser and join a room, Battlefield 4 style. So is it just bad? Do you just enjoy the superb physics model and driving dynamics on your own? Oh, absolutely not. League races exist, and they can be glorious. Get your friends or even randoms together and set one up, you won't regret it. By adding structure to the multiplayer, you get a proper racing experience. Unfortunately, setting a server up yourself is a pain to do, so most people just pay for a private server on server hosting websites, but if you have the know-how, it shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. I've participated in a league with some friends and it has been the most fun I've had in a racing game in a long time. If you're equally matched in the skill department, get ready for multi-lap battles as dirty air isn't really an issue in this game. Now, due to the limitless amount of car and track mods, as well as skins too, you will never run out of content to use in your semi-official little leagues. Alternatively, just join an already existing one. I haven't really done that, but I'm sure they're just as good, if not better, due to more contestants. You might be asking yourself, what about the single player? Well, the career mode, if you can even call it that, is really bad. 
so much so that most people have never even played it properly. It lacks content and what content there is, is pretty boring. There's some fun to be had, but that's nothing compared to the multiplayer or custom races you set up yourself. Just get a set of course level with Tiana if you're looking for a career mode. It emulates the Gran Turismo games of the past and is vastly superior to the abhorrent career mode Kuna Simulazione made. I must admit, games like Assetto Corsa Competizione and iRacing easily have a beat on the multiplayer side. However, none have the incredibly focused modding community of this gem. You can't drive a road car in ACC or a T-Rex in iRacing, which is what makes this game so special in the first place. There are countless free and paid high quality mods out there, and they're remarkably easy to find. How do you install them? Just extract, drag and drop into the corresponding game folder. But what if I told you it didn't have to be this way? With Content Manager, link in the description below, you can just drag and drop all of your mods into the game and it installs them for you. It features way better UI, much better settings and mod control, as well as improved graphics due to the included CSP shaders. It is a must for every AC player, the absolute core of this game once you get into the modding side. And you will. They're pretty good, nothing special but enough to keep you satisfied if you want to play some custom races. They do sometimes act like you just aren't there, however not as frequent as many other sim titles. You can customize their raw pace, have them vary from let's say 93.5% to 97.5% strength, and do the same for their regression, aka how often they will go for a gap. Overall they're solid but that is pretty much everything to say about them. Um. The user interface is so bad that the community had to make a launch that completely ignores its existence. The collision physics are wonky and the glitches are plentiful. Don't even think about getting the console um. version because it is atrocious. Modded cars crash the game, modded tracks crash the game, stall too many mods, game bone boot. Game crashes if not in 32 bit mode, force feedback murders performance on lower end hardware. Multiplayer servers incorrectly spawn everyone in, infrequent frame drops on high end hardware, the track surface won't load other than the rubber in line. Rather peculiar. The sky refuses to sky and the driver doesn't load in. Well, that's pretty much it, actually. Can't think of anything else at least. If you can, let me know in the comments. Uh, 